Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. Hey there, tech fans. Welcome back. I'm your Into Tomorrow host, Dave Graveline. Looking for a simple device to download your email on the go? Check it out in this week's Product Spotlight with Rob, coming up in just a bit. We want to hear from you, America. Share your tech dilemmas with us via our Ask Dave hotline. Dial 1-800-899-INTO. That's 1-800-899-4686 anytime, 24-7. You can also send an email to askdave at graveline.com. Be sure to give us your name, city, state, and how you listen into tomorrow. Being that it's Halloween week, we won't trick you. In fact, we'll even give you a treat for participating when your call or email makes it on the air. Will your question be answered next? Tune into tomorrow this weekend to find out. Visit graveline.com or intotomorrow.com for more info. Now let's get this party started with Chris Graveline. He's back. Here's this week in tech history. Thanks, Pops. Over the sore throat, but at least I've still got a sexy, sick voice. You wish. Hey. This week in 1936, the first electric generator at Hoover Dam went into full operation. Damn. In 1955, the first microwave oven was introduced in Mansfield, Ohio at the corporate headquarters of the Tappan Company. The manufacturer put a $1,200 price tag on the new stove that could cook eggs in 22 seconds and bacon in 90 seconds. In 1960, the Bull of a Watch Company introduced its high-tech Accutron electronic wristwatch. This week in 1998, the Space Shuttle Discovery blasted off, returning 77-year-old U.S. Senator John Glenn to space some 36 years after he became the first American in orbit. Glenn was part of a crew of seven astronauts shepherding scientific payloads on the shuttle mission. That's our look back at This Week in Tech History. Now, back to my hot tea. Thanks, Chris. Glad you're feeling better. I'm very thankful for the microwave oven. Otherwise, bachelors like us would really be in trouble. Want to bring your email on the road? Well, Rob's got a device that's dedicated to taking your email messages wherever you go. But that's all it does. Let's see what Rob's got to say. Thanks, Dave. Meet Peek. It's an email checking dedicated device for those who want to peek at their email on the go. After some initial setup, it connects to a national network to download your webmail. Just enter your webmail address and password, and it's ready to download your messages. For example, our peak came with a T-Mobile SIM card inside, so you can theoretically check your Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, and Hotmail accounts wherever you are as long as there's a good connection with the network. It also supports AT&T, Verizon, Roadrunner, Juno, NetZero, and many other email accounts. At the moment, they don't support exchange-based emails, which is a bummer, but they're working on it, they say. It can support up to three accounts at a time, which is what we have on this device. Peak is strictly for email checking, it's good as an entry-level device. Keep in mind, you'll have to carry Peak in addition to your cell phone or whatever other devices you're carrying. I've been using smartphones for a long time, so I'm more used to them and would dislike carrying an extra piece of gear like this one. But then, it's geared to those who would rather not use a smartphone. We have to point out that Peak converts HTML and rich text emails to just plain text. Boring. They claim it's easy to read on the go but I would prefer to read my emails in HTML. That's just me. I think they want it to resemble a BlackBerry in that sense. Peak does support JPEG images and attachments under 10 megabytes in size. Design-wise, we like the screen, and the device itself is pretty sleek. There's an envelope on the top left corner that emits a blue light whenever you receive a new email. You can have Peak vibrate and or ring along with the blue light. I found the keyboard to be a bit hard to type on. I don't like it. You have to push hard on the keys. Also, the scroll wheel on the side doesn't respond as fast as I'd like it to. Email does take a bit to come in. That's not completely their fault as it is your webmail client and on a cellular connection. So, depending on your email provider, Peak checks for new emails every 5 to 15 minutes. Peak is available for just under 100 bucks. On top of that, you pay a $19.95 monthly flat fee rate for unlimited email checking. There's no contract with Peak. It's a pay-as-you-go kind of thing and you can get out at any time. Personally, I would prefer having a smartphone being that some like the Palm Centros, for example, are available on 100 bucks and offer more features, including a phone. However, we do have to be fair and balanced, so if you like to take your email on the go anywhere in the U.S., then Peak is something you should consider. It does make a good gift for the holidays for those who have never used a smartphone, so keep that in mind. 
peeking into tomorrow. This has been another Product Spotlight with yours truly. Let's bring it over to Dave. Thanks, Rob. Perhaps version two will fix those issues you have, or therapy. Let us know what you think. If you get to try one, would you carry a device for your emails as well as a phone? Have you seen the newest Dave's Top 10 list? Whenever you have the time, swing by and take a peek at our website. Of course, you may be there now viewing this video, but if not, come by graveline.com or intotomorrow.com. Well, that does it for this week. We welcome you to join us next week on another Into Tomorrow update right here.